Hello, hello everyone, welcome back to another tier list video. This is going to be for patch 14.7 in the mid lane, mid lane tier list. Before we get into the video, as you might recall last time, I said that I was going to be flying out to Poland to attend the Ultra League of Finals and coach on stage. I did just that, you can see me on stage here. It was like a banger of a time. We did get absolutely blasted 3-0, but I thought some of you might enjoy the, the follow-up on that last time. We're going to be competing in EU Masters as well, so if you want to keep an eye out for that, I'd appreciate it. If you want to go cheer the team on, Orbit Anonymous, I'd appreciate that. But let's get into the tier list. So there aren't really that many changes this patch, to be honest. Mid lane is going to stay very similar to what you've seen the last couple of patches. Ari is still going to be by far the strongest mid laner of the patch. Kassadin is going to be able to be picked in certain situations against most of these champions. Kassadin is incredibly, incredibly good. Um, the only changes that are really on this patch is Galio changes and Lux changes. Practically speaking, nothing else really matters. But let's get into it. The first changes of the patch, Galio. So practically speaking, what they did was they gave him a little bit more oomph on his passive damage for his um, his AP scaling. But the way that Riot has kind of pushed Galio these last couple of patches indicates to me that they don't really want Galio to be played as an AP champion because they've completed completely gutted his scalings. Um, what they also added then was they added a little percent damage reduction scaling on his... Um, W, right? When you hold your W, you take reduced damage. Fantastic, right? Um, and they added an AP or a magic resist scaling to that, which basically just screams you're only going to pick Galio if you're against either two or three AP champions on the enemy team. Maybe there's a world you can pick it against, um, shall we say, something like an Akali uh, mid lane plus maybe an Evelyn jungle or something like that, or a Karthus jungle, and it can work very well. But the problem with Galio right now is a lot of the champions you want to pick him against are melee champions because he can blast them very hard, and they're AP champions. Those are kind of the champions he really loves playing against. Um, but you also need to be playing against an AP jungler. Like, the entire enemy team basically has to be AP, and... Believe me, in those instances, Galio is very strong because he can go a, a build that probably looks something like a, an Abyssal Mask with Koenig Rookern and maybe the um, Magic vs. Sunfire item, I think Hollow Radiance or Unending Despair, I forget which one it is, they all look so so like similar. Um, in that situation, you can definitely pick up Galio, but I, I don't think I'm really going to move him that much on the tier list. Like, the only thing that you could argue is maybe he deserves to be an S-tier counter pick, but even then, I don't really think so. I honestly think he should be going down into the B-tier. I think I underreacted as to how big these nerfs actually are to Galio, especially at the lower end of the ladder, mostly because... Galio at the lower end of the ladder, the reason he was so obnoxious is you would shove in every wave and you would roam everywhere on the map and you would get your teammates ahead. And that's great and all, Galio can still do that. The problem is now he falls off as a damage threat. He did not do that previously because you could build full AP on him, which means at the lower end of the ladder, sure, you're snowballing your teammates, but you're not really getting anything else done. So I'm going to pull him down a bit. The next change we have is to Karma. Basically, her W root duration is going up at early ranks, which is fantastic because as Kami, you don't max this until last, so anything you can get is good. It's an extra 0.2 seconds at early levels. That's fantastic. Practically speaking, until level 14, this is what you're going to be working with, so an extra 0.2 seconds isn't bad. This isn't going to really change Karma that much. It might mean that you can maybe land one more auto attack on someone, and it might make kiting a little bit easier and chasing people a little bit easier because the route lasts a little bit longer, but it's not going to be game-breaking. Uh, the next change is, basically speaking, her alt and E AoE shield. I remember I saw a tweet about this. One of the rioters posted that essentially this is a 22% shield increase overall once the math is worked out. So I suppose that's nice. She gets a bigger alt E shield. The problem is the style of play that Kama has been adopting recently has been mainly focused on alt and Q. It's more of a damage threat type of Kama. But if you guys throw your mind back just one or two seasons with Radiant Virtue in the mid lane on Karma, she was more of a um, an alt E kind of champion where you would build more supportive on her with a Radiant Virtue and a Staff of Flowing Water with an Ardent Sensor. That style of Kama might be coming back in mid lane depending on matchups. 
Um, but I'm very excited to see how that shakes out. I, I think I'm going to take her down a notch as well and place her in the B tier. I don't quite think she has that oomph anymore to really be that big of a threat in, in solo queue because sh she's not quite dealing as much damage and the, the last nerfs really hurt her quite a bit. But there is a world where this supportive style of Kama mid lane re-emerges back as we've seen happen multiple times and she becomes very good again. I don't know, but we'll have to wait and see. The next change is for Lux. So... Because they're nerfing the support item that Lux plays with, they've given her some buffs on her uh, passive and on her Q. This is obviously fantastic. These are just purely AP scaling buffs, which means that you're not really going to be feeling these buffs very much during the early stages. It's a 5% increase on her Q and a 5% increase on her passive. It's 10% increase overall in your full rotation, which does matter once you start entering the later stages of the game. That is usually going to be an extra like 60 damage in your full rotation once you're on three items and you have 600 AP. Once you have your Malignant, your Horizon Focus, and your Death Cap, you're usually sitting around 500 AP. If you have a Magi's on top, probably around 600 AP. So there's an extra 600 damage in your full combo, which is quite nice. That's a lot of damage that might put something in the someone in the lethal threshold. Um, I don't think this matters too much as a buff. I don't think you're really going to be able to tell that Lux has been buffed that much. It's not like a massive breakthrough buffs. It does say that it it, it matters for her wave clear benefits, but I honestly don't think it does, unless maybe this additional AP somehow means that you can clear waves a little bit faster, but I don't see how that would be possible, because usually Lux isn't auto-attacking the wave regardless, uh, and for like wave clear breakpoints, usually AP scaling doesn't affect that much, because you don't have a lot of AP during the early stages, right? You're not going to feel this buff during the early stages, you only feel it once you reach around three items, which... Well, in that instance, Lux is usually winning games regardless on three items, right? Because she can just throw out the binding, hit an E, and boom, you've been lasered from five years away. And all of a sudden, you're like, ah, oh, I died while someone was throwing an ult on me five screens away. I could outplay that for sure. But I, I don't think these buffs really matter. So I'm, I'm going to be keeping Lux solidly in the A tier, to be honest. If we look at the rest of the tier list, I do think I have some champions that might be a, a tiny bit misplaced at the moment. I think Corky uh, should probably be pulled down into the B tier as well. Ever since the Eclipse interaction was nerfed with Malignant, I don't think he's quite as strong anymore, so I will definitely be pulling him down. Skarner is in the A tier here. This is because he was a smolder placeholder. Let's get rid of him, shall we? Uh, because now new Skarner is actually out. I haven't had a chance to play him mid lane yet, but I don't think we'll be seeing him that much in the middle lane if I'm going to be completely honest. Um, I think we can probably also pull Akali down one tier. I don't think we're seeing this champion that much. The mid lane meta is just not very kind to her right now, right? Ari beats Akali, Kassadin beats Akali, Aurelian Sol is very good against Akali, and Nivea is good against Akali, Talia is good against Akali, and Vagar is good against Akali. So I don't think it really makes sense to have her um, up, in the, up in the A tier. She's just not very well treated by the mid lane meta at the moment to be honest i think that's basically it for the tier list i like where everyone else is on this list to be honest uh, maybe yone can go up uh, yasuo can go up as well after the ie changes that might have a, a really big impact on these champions but we'll just have to wait and see also silas got changed this patch but the only buffs he received were for jungle so you don't really need to worry about him in the mid lane i still think he sits solidly in the a tier where he can be picked in certain instances and that's practically speaking it. I don't think there's any other changes I really want to make to the tier list at the moment. I think maybe some champions can be pulled down a little bit. Something like a Pantheon can probably get into the C tier. He's not in a very nice spot in the meta at the moment, just because, well, there are better champions to pick instead of him, such as a Talon or such as an Akshan, if you really want to be playing one of these AD mid lane threats. Trindamir could probably go up after the crit changes. Wouldn't surprise me, but again, I'll probably have to just wait and see. There's also a world where I need to move Seraphine down because she got changed recently. Um, but honestly, I'm, I'm quite happy with this tier list right now. So if you guys have any thoughts on it, I'm sure you, you will have some disagreements because, well, these are quite outlandish, some of these claims, such as Brand in the A tier. That's a, bit, a little bit unusual for people to see. I actually do think I should move Kassadin down into the S tier. I think he's not quite as OP as Ari. Uh, he's very good against a lot of the champions at the top of this list, but he's not really blind pickable because you can run into Interstana or Nefari. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about the list. Um, this is a little bit more free flow because there weren't that many changes in the mid lane, so I could elaborate a little bit more on 
uncertain champions, but if you guys want me to talk about some champions in the next video, I will for sure try my best to do that if uh, there are not that many changes uh, just like this patch. But I'm sure you guys have some disagreements with some of these champions, so let me know what you think about it and we can discuss it in the comments below. To be honest, I try to do my best to respond to anyone that has any thoughts about the tier list, but yeah.